Hola friends, it's Sarah May and this is an episode about looking for love in all of the wrong places. And I'm going to have a little guest visitor, my love of my life, who's going to help me narrate a few of these examples, which is very exciting. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so this is for anyone who chooses bad relationships. So whether that's in friendships or in your love interests. So I'm going to go through kind of the basics of those bad matches and why they are the way they are. And hopefully um, you'll get some insight as to what it is in you that is drawn to those things so that you can choose differently in the future. Um, so before I begin, I just want you to reflect on what it is you're drawn to in others and just write it down. So what is your like Achilles type? Um, so when you picture the kind of person that you befriend or you end up talking to um, at a party, what is it about them that kind of attracts you? Is it because they like you and they pursue you or do you find something about them compelling? Just write down any patterns that you that come up for you. And so um, also just write down other patterns about your relationships in the way that they end. Are you the one that kind of ends them? Do you cut people off or are you the one that kind of gets shut out or maybe you give more than you receive um, in a relationship? Just what's your kind of universal trait, I guess. Um, and then once you've kind of written those notes down, just know that all the bad choices that you've made are not your fault. It's likely something you can't even see the patterns in just because when you make choices about attraction or people that you like, it's something that's encoded into your chemistry and it's based on just your upbringing and it's a part of usually, especially when it comes to romantic relationships, it's a part of your love map and it's basically up ingrained into the foundation of who you are um, and what you believe it means to be in love and like what you believe a good relationship is like. So all of those definitions like commitment and whether or not, you know, how, how couples should deal with finances, all that stuff is kind of set up by the way you grew up. So I'm going to talk about just different types that you might find yourself unknowingly in a relationship with. And, uh, I just go, I'm going to go through five of the biggies, I guess. And there are, uh, there are some of them you might recognize and maybe some of them that you don't, but so the first one is commitment phobes. Second one, narcissists. Third one, big children. Fourth one, the never serious types. So for number one, commitment phobes, this is a little soundbite um, from Adam, the love of my life. And I don't know if you have ever heard or experienced people that sound a little bit like this. Are you one of those people who thinks living together is that big of a deal? I'm planning a trip with all my friends and I just, it's really important to me. And I was hoping that you could come. I mean, it's, it's in September. Do you think you can come? September? Oh, I don't really know your friends too well. I don't know. I don't know if I get along with them. You just go make it a girl's thing. Um, job. I, where, where is this going anyway? We've barely been together a year. Most people are together for like three years minimum. Hey, do you think you could come to my, uh, nephew's bar mitzvah next weekend? Ooh, next weekend. I might be free. I don't know. Uh, let's play it by ear. Excellent. So how they act in relationships. So how you might know if you're in a relationship with somebody like that, they will pursue you. And when then, and then when you clump, you come close to them, they immediately push you away. So it's like they have a phobia of commitment and it'll show up in every other area of their life. So they won't be able to be, stay put in a city or in a job or even commit to like making solid plans in advance. And it's because they fear commitment in all directions. And includes you. So they fear not being with you and they fear bearing, they fear being with you. And it's and they're likely very selfish or very self-centered. 
So they won't even know what you are feeling at any point in time because they are so far outside of the relationship. Mentally, they will never get close enough to who you are. So if you have been burned by a commitment phobe, know that you had very little to do with the situation or the reasons that they had because they're just trapped in their own just purgatory, limbo. So what they're attracted to in people is people who play hard to get because you, when you are acting like you really don't like somebody and you're just pushing somebody away, they can safely love you from a distance or admire you. And so this is like their ideal kind of courtship because it it can allow them to feel like in love with you because you're so far away from them. And usually when they come on, they come on really strong and charming and seductive and they it's like the whole nine. So then as soon as you are wooed, like once you you hint at any interest, then they run for the hills. And it's only when you're really far away that they feel safe. So you'll constantly get that push pull push pull where you're like come here come here go away. Come here come here go away. Forever. Um so if you end up in a relationship with a commitment phobe, they are uh the way that it manifests is they believe that you are basically trying to trap them and that you are trying to keep them or somehow force them into a commitment. Like it's a severe paranoia. And because of that, they're going to make you feel like it's your fault when the relationship is failing. Like, oh, you're just too needy. Ah, you're asking too much. Ah, you're just trying to make me do blah, blah, blah. Like it, it just becomes crazy making because you're being told that you're the one that's irrational. Meanwhile, your needs are likely not being met. So the next portion of this description is, why are they like that? Um, They have a screwy love map, basically. It's like, it's something in the foundation of how they perceive relationship has been, relationships has been really damaged. And it's usually like a traumatizing uh, parent situation where they, they were fighting a lot in the home, maybe very vocal. Basically, the idea of a relationship and commitment uh, was just disrupted at a very young age, and they are terrified, don't want it, cannot it, cannot undo that until they have addressed those issues. But those issues are often really hard to address when it's in an adult. So it's something that can be managed, but it's it's very low likelihood that someone will be cured of it if they're late on in life. Um, next part of this question is, or sort of this topic, why do you choose these people? Uh, what makes you attracted to a commitment phobe in the first place? Because maybe you think of yourself like a nice, charming, cool person. Because it's safe. And you're the one who gets wooed. Like, you get pursued. And you don't have to really do anything. Like, you don't have to feel like threatened about it you just can get to see them from afar and that feels like it's like you know it's kind of entertaining you're like you're like you're not being asked to do anything really and um when they do when you do come close they go away so if you have gone for a commitment phobe i'm guessing it's because you're really afraid of getting hurt and that you've been hurt before because you can feel very safe when you're not ever too close to somebody It just keeps that relationship forever in that, like, middle zone. So it's likely that they pursued you intensely, and then they immediately played to her to get. And maybe you, you know, maybe they've had a series of short relationships, but you assumed that you would be different because of just the genuine way that they pursued you. And of course you would believe that. Why wouldn't you? Um, But just know that in the future... Trust that that track record exists for a reason. It's not going to be different just because you are extra awesome. People like that are available because they have some issues. And it's just know that it's not about you. The warning signs are push-pull, run for the hills as soon as you want to come close. Also will accuse you of being the one that's destroying the relationship. Okay, number two in the list of bad choices People who need to be fixed. So this is another set of familiar phrases you might have heard. What? Why? How did you just spill wine all over my house and then break my record player and the, my fish is dead? What? Did you just like have a party here all day? What? What happened? Sorry, babe. I'm not as perfect as you. Okay. I do things. I have accidents. 
It's not my fault. We all can't. We all can't just be this big perfect person that doesn't spill anything or kill any fishes. Okay, it's not. It's not everybody. Well, I, sorry. I guess I didn't mean to. You're not stupid. I. Apology rejected. Hey, I was I was wondering if you could come with me. Um, it's my parents' fiftieth wedding anniversary, and they're having this party, and it's just it's like it's gonna be a really big deal. My family. I was I was hoping you could go with me. It's in uh, three weeks from now. Could you come? Babe, you know I don't. You know I don't roll to things like that. I don't. I don't do parties. I don't do families. I, I'm just uh, just messed up and. Keep to myself. It's just kind of how I roll. How they act in relationships. They are troubled, falling apart. They kind of seem to want to stay that way. So they're like adult children who just can't seem to deal with cleaning up their messes. And it's like almost a deciding to fall apart kind of person. So they're deciding that they can't change. They just are this way. And uh, why are they like that? They're usually just not ready to look at pain that's buried deep inside. So it's likely a trauma or a bad, really bad parenting. And overall, they just have really painful feelings of low self-worth. So when you believe you're a bad person, it actually compounds the effect of this because you don't feel like there's anything to debunk about who you are deep down inside. So it's a self, self-fulfilling self prophecy, but it's not one you're ever going to examine because you just feel like, yeah, that I am this way. That's exactly who I am. Why would I ever try and work on it? And know that it is contagious. So if you get pulled into the drama of a person like this, they'll basically apologize again and again and feel shameful and disappointing and blah, blah, blah. It's like uh, it keeps spreading the um, disappointment in their selves, like just engaging in any relationship whatsoever. Um, and once you live like that, it just becomes your shtick. Like you think of it as your identity. And so a lot of people tend to romanticize it. So they live like they've chosen this alternate lifestyle. Like I'm, yeah, I'm just, you know, I've been through a lot. Like it just becomes this kind of war story, cool guy thing, girl, whatever thing. And it's like, it's basically somebody that's decided to not try to save their lives. So it's like living like you're dead. You're not responsible. You're not taking the right actions. You're choosing to not act capable based on an unwillingness to believe you are worth it. Um, so the next part is why would you choose people like this? Uh, because you feel safe in any of your sorrows and lows. It's basically, it's comfortable to not be challenged by someone else's confidence and Maybe they're very aspirational or they're really into exercise. When you're with somebody that's this low, it makes you just feel like you don't have to try and you don't run the risk of feeling like you're not good enough. And so it's a symptom that you have some feelings that you are maybe not your best, something you feel ashamed of that it attracts you to somebody that is a mess because it makes you feel like, hey, I'm doing pretty well. And also this person is not going to be uh, so judgmental of this flaw that I have. Um, and it's also a symptom of codependency. So it's likely that you don't want to have a focus on you because of unaddressed pain that you have inside. And so codependency are, is basically like undealt with issues that you just don't feel like dealing with them. And therefore, you're just shifting your focus onto somebody else and their issues. So it's running from dealing. And if you choose people like this, it's likely because it was because of shared past experiences and they're probably negative ones. Um, and so you should never choose people based on that because you should, you basically rise to their level and you should only choose people based on what you want to foster in yourself. So choose people that represent what you love about yourself and what you want to bring out more of in yourself. I know it feels uncomfortable to be the focus in a relationship. And when you are the person that's doing all the fixing and doing all the focusing, it can feel very soothing because you, you're you being rewarded by the process. But you're unknowingly negating your needs. And if 
you have a habit of choosing people like this, I think you should spend some time working on yourself and looking inward because you have to fix whatever that is, that like pain inside for you to feel whole enough to be loved properly. Like you have to be able to receive love. And if you're not able to do that, like if it feels very uncomfortable for you to have other people do stuff for you, that's a sign that you need to do a little bit of work because you deserve to have somebody that takes care of you. Even though you can do everything and you are able to take care of so many people and do all of those things, life is a very bumpy roller coaster and you need to have a partner or a friend that's going to be able to take care of you when you need it. There will be a time like that. You can't just be the one doing everything for everybody else. So you need an equal half. You need someone that's as capable as you are. And once you do the work on yourself, you actually have to teach yourself to accept and allow others to show you love, which it can be very, very uncomfortable, especially if you're not the type of person that's used to being the focus in a relationship. Um, but it's so well worth it. And that's really what the most beautiful form of a relationship is. It's when it's completely balanced. So choose people who share your best traits and they will bring out the best in you. You will better each other in the process and not the opposite. Okay, the next group on my list is narcissists. And now we have a little uh, clip, a little audio bite. That's so rude. I'm, I don't really have like a fever. I just can't even get out of bed. Like, I really feel sick. Oh, so you're just going to lay in bed and let me go out and do this by myself. That's real, real cool. Real team player right there. Man, I really like your friend. He's really cool. I mean, I, I think I'd like hanging out with him more. He seems awesome. Oh, man, that is such a front. He's like the biggest, biggest idiot I know. And not even fun to be around. He's always a buzzkill. He won't shut up. All he does is talk about himself. It's like a task to hang out with him. Narcissists. La, la, la. How do they act uh, when you're in a relationship with one? Well, they act really, really confident, uh, egotistical, and above all, they act better than others. But they are in reality very, very vulnerable. So it'll come across as somebody that's very accomplished, kind of full of themselves, but then like falls apart into a million pieces um, when anything at all wounds them or like touches on threatening their confidence. Because they're hiding feelings of, like, utter worthlessness. Um, so it's like this complete double, like, black and white flip between, like, I'm the best in the world. I'm the worst in the world. And they're also very manipulative because they, because they have such a terrible sense of self-worth, they need to control others and keep them attached. Like, they need constant adoration. So if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you'll be asked constantly to prove your love and dedication and it will never be enough it'll be like you need to be the best fan ever and if you're if you do something tiny or little um to show like you have your own life they'll punish you like things like overreacting to what you didn't do and should have done and how you're a terrible person a terrible partner a terrible friend um it's almost like a hostage situation so if you were upset and you brought up how uh, they hurt your feelings with something, they would likely say, how could you say something like that to me? Like anything you go through that's bad is only going to be about them and how it affects them. Um, and they cannot handle it if you show too much independence. They need you to stay beholden to them first and foremost, and and that's the only way they can feel secure. So anytime uh, you start to wander in any direction with your attention, they're going to uh, kind of poke and prod or stab <laughs> to get you to hurt and then like basically come back. Um, so why are they like that? They are swinging between loving themselves and hating themselves. And it comes from feelings of worthlessness uh, and the sense that they are unlovable. And that's likely from a really bad parent. Um, it's something that happened very early on in childhood and it's, it's, kind of from a, a parent that maybe f made them feel like they were uh, 
just to, worthless somehow um, or ver- made them very, very self-critical. So they feel like they have to be adored because that's the only way they don't feel worthless. And these types of people are very, very dangerous because it's all about them. So stay away. You might think it's because they posed a challenge and uh, you wanted to pursue them because they were, you know, likely very accomplished, but you want to keep yourself away from looking at yourself. It's the same codependency kind of structure. When you choose people like this, it's because they demand so much of your attention and so much of your love or adoration that you don't ever have to have your needs addressed. It's like they're not, not going to be giving back to you as much as you're giving to them. Um, and I know that when you choose people like this, it's a double-edged sword because it's something you're gifted at and you're, you're really good at helping others. And so it might feel really good to be uh, in a relationship with somebody like this because they, they need you and you can see so clearly you know, how to fix their problems or whatever. You can just pump them up and make them feel great, but it's because you're not looking at yourself and it's sort of like a soothing tactic. So you have to focus on someone else's needs so that you can have uh, control over managing their feelings. Um, You don't have to have the the feelings you don't want to have because you're controlling them by focusing on somebody else's life and fixing their problems. So It's something that likely came from childhood, if you're attracted to people like this. Um, And you likely took on this role in your household growing up. You were probably a very good uh, supporter of somebody else. And that's definitely a good thing. But it's not good when you are the person that's doing this in all of your relationships. It should be even. If your relationships are always one-sided and you're the fixer, you're likely getting hurt a lot. I'm guessing that you've been disappointed quite a bit by your relationships. So I, I would say you need to focus on defending yourself, just protecting and honoring yourself, and basically just focus on getting mad. Uh, get mad when somebody doesn't do what they should have done. And don't dismiss it. Just don't explain it away. Um, because you deserve just as much great treatment as you give other people. And so if they're not honoring your needs, you should be mad about it. It's not cool. Don't let it, don't just let it be explained away. A partner, a friend, it means there's a balance. It should never be one-sided. So I would say if you're trying to take steps to change this dynamic in yourself, just start setting boundaries based on what you don't like about other people's behavior and then start enforcing them. Don't reward bad behavior Like if someone messes up, don't forgive or explain it away. Don't say like, it's okay. Just because you understand why they do the things they do and you can fix other people's problems doesn't make it okay for you to tolerate it. And you need to be better about setting up the boundaries. Like I'm not going to be okay with people not calling me back and then not, you know, having a good reason for it. Like that's a boundary that you can set up and then you just have to enforce it. Like you have to honor those boundaries, period. People are not allowed to call me at midnight and expect me to drop everything. Like, nope, I'm not going to answer the phone. That's a boundary. Enforce it. Don't blame other people for forcing you to break your own boundaries. It's not about that. You have control over what you do with your body. I digress. Moving on. So number four, the quote, not looking for serious types. So this is a little audio clip that defines that kind of person. Is it cool if I just leave my toothbrush here? I just, you know, I'm here every night or you're at my place and I just figured it just might be easier. Is that cool? Uh, You know, I'm, I'm just not that kind of guy. You know, what we got, what we have going here is it's fun. It's good. It's mellow. It's chill. It's relax. It's chillax. It's casual. It's fun. Why would, why would we want to mess with that? Are you, like, seeing other people? I mean, we, like, spend every day together. I just kind of assumed, you know, like, we're a couple. Well, I never I never said we were a couple. How they act in relationships? They keep it like a regular relationship. They just play house, you know. So it's like 
you are basically acting like if you're if this person is like a romantic relationship you're basically in a relationship you're doing all of the things that are in a relationship but without the agreement to quote be together so they probably act dismissive of your relationship even though you're pretty much living and acting as like a committed couple and so why are they like that they're waiting for their superior in the uh in the realm of love meaning they they're messing around and playing around because they can so these types are often looking for someone who's going to be kind of a tough win and a self to, self-protective self-honoring type because they need someone that's going to not allow them to mess around like they almost want to feel safe with someone who can keep them in line and like whip them into shape so if they said if you ended up in a romantic relationship with somebody like this and they said they didn't want to commit or be serious because just it's not where they are in their life and blah 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 it's really likely that they were only that way because you didn't demand it because if they really liked you i mean they would probably come around if you just would expect or uh, accept nothing less than a commitment but because you allowed it it's they're just going to continue to get away with what they want so it's very likely they would be in a committed relationship with another person who did demand it and nothing else. So if you accepted a person like this regardless of a request to be committed, you basically demonstrated you are not the one because it's like it's almost like revealing a sickness to their primal senses because you tell people how they can act with what you allow. Why would you choose a person like this? Um if I put myself in your shoes, I think it's because you think you want them so bad because they're so awesome and fun and cool and that you just say, "Screw it, I want them anyway. I don't care. I'll just settle because I want to be around them so much." So if you're choosing to settle for less than exactly what you want, my guess is because you feel it's all you can get or that it's all you're really worth. Like this is the last chance you're going to get. You should just take it. And that is the problem you should look at. Just do a one-on-one with yourself and just focus on building up that relationship with yourself because you need some more confidence and self-worth. Basically, you need to get happy flying solo. Just and once you get to that great state where you're like, "I love me. I'm the best thing in the world." Then it'll just come naturally. You'll just know how to deal with a person like this instantly because you act as the person who deserves to be committed to at any cost like that's who gets the people that commit to them when you act as the person that deserves it um so yeah don't accept less uh and in closing i would like to ask you to go back to what you thought of in that very first section what is your pattern and why do you accept a partner that's less than what you deserve just start to go through your history and just identify the different patterns and like once you identify what your habits are you can spot the void in you that is somehow being attracted to these types because there's something inside of you that needs a little manual tweak like you have to just retrain your behavior and you have to decide to choose better for yourself like you have to kind of force yourself to do it because it's something that's ingrained into your DNA almost and therefore it just feels nice it feels comfortable it feels familiar and that's why you're kind of being drawn to these people um so it's like you have to become aware of it and conscious of it in order to change it you have to start forcing yourself to enact a new kind of muscle memory and it'll take just some practice and then just being conscious of it but very quickly it just becomes a part of who you are it'll be natural so decide to be sick of this crap and just get to the good stuff just choose to get over this bumpy part of relationships because who wants to waste years of time that could have been spent with someone awesome who's going to re- just revel in all that is great about you this is all about what you want for yourself so what are your priorities is love one of them is friendship one of them is loyalty one of them if you haven't found love before i'm guessing you probably don't believe it exists but it does for everyone it just 
exists when you're ready for it. And so if you haven't found it, you're not ready. Once you work on yourself and you get to the point of really, really liking yourself and you're ready to be loved, you can love in return. And that's, that's the point you just need to reach. It's all about building that perfect love with yourself first. So just think about who you want to be with. Make your list of all of those things in your mind. Just visualize the person who matches everything that you would love to be with for the rest of your life. And what are the greatest traits about yourself that you want to pull out more? So if you feel like you're ready already and you've just been waiting, you're just, you're happy, you got your life together, you feel great about who you are, you did all the work on yourself you need to, and you're just deep down, just looking for that person. If you haven't already done it, write that love list. and Describe it in every tiny little minute detail. Just get very descriptive and literally write that down. I'm not kidding. Something weird happens. That person just shows up a lot quicker. And then just keep putting yourself out there and say no to anyone who does not align with what's on your list. And then just go back to working on being your best you. And be patient. Very, very patient. Think of love like you're finding the perfect color shoes for a very, very specific style of vintage costume gown. It would take you a really long time to find the right shoes, especially with the right heel and in the right size. And at the perfect price. In the right color. So times that by your soulmate, and that is a lot longer. So it'll take a little while for the stars to align, but just be patient and be ready because you've got to be your best self when they show up. Don't take on anybody that's going to occupy you so that you miss that opportunity because you get to choose the quality of the rest of your life and the one that you're going to stay with for every day of that life. So choose love. Um... And I just want to say, if you've gone through all of the worst relationships in the world and you're kind of like kicking yourself because you're trying to figure out why this is happening, know that you've got to go through all of the bad stuff to get to the good stuff. You've got to gather all of those missing lessons you need to be your best self. So it was not all for nothing. Just know that you are not going to repeat your mistakes and you're just going to focus on loving yourself and being your best self and then get ready for all the greatness that's on its way. Um, So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this helped in some way. And uh, don't forget to smile.